Hello everyone, honorable teacher and dear students. Welcome to the fourth session of the first day of the Turkish Republic National High School Students Symposium, the crown of our independence and future. Honorable Nihal Urhan will be the chair of the session and schools to present papers, their topics and speakers. Firstly, uh, Elanal Social Sciences High School, Dem Toprak Özek, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk and Turkish Foreign Affairs. Uh, then Antalya Kumluca Social, uh, Social Science High School, uh, Asude Bilge Çınaray, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk in the eyes of the Anzacs, uh, FLR Social Sciences High School, Osman Aksu, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk through the eyes of the West, Gülveren uh, Anatolian High School, Ekin Aydın, the image of Mustafa Kemal Atatürk in Western countries and his foreign policies, then, uh, Türkler Borsa İstanbul Social Science High School, Hatice Begüm Doğan, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, Through the Eyes of the West. And lastly, Neyman Erol Yılmaz Social Science High School, Seher Muran, From the Broken Hill Conspiracy, The Darkness War to the Turkish and Azak Friendship. And uh, now, I leave the floor to the chair of the session, Honorable Nihal Urhan, to moderate the session. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon to everyone, honorable weavers, precious advisors, and dearest students who are here with us today as principal participants of our symposium, the Turkish Republic, the jewel in our crown, independence and future. Thanks to all of you, we will be holding eight sessions. However, I feel absolutely delighted and fortunate to have the opportunity to welcome you all in this particular session as a teacher of English myself. As you know, we're celebrating the centennial of the Turkish Republic this year, and I cannot help but feel hopeful in that, that it is our rising generation, you, uh, who will tell us about Mustafa Kemal Atatürk and his leadership, which enabled us to speak our minds freely today, even in another language other than our mother tongue. As a fluent speaker of French uh, and German himself, he believed that uh, Turkish foreign language and foreign, uh, Turkish language and literature and foreign languages and literatures studies would be the key to effective inter interactions and communications between cultures, uh, which will clearly be illustrated to us today by our six great students. With no further ado, I would like to give the screen to our first speaker, Dem Toprak Özek, who is a keen history reader from Erinal Social Sciences High School to make his speech on Mustafa Kemal Atatürk and his foreign affairs. We're with you then. Okay. In this symposium, which we prepared specially for Centennial of Turkish Republic, we will discuss Atatürk's role and impacts in Turkish foreign affairs in three contexts. During Atatürk's leadership, Turkey prioritized its own interest and pursued peace on a global scale. Atatürk recognized that a strong foreign policy was necessary for Turkey gain a uh, respect position among modern nations and understanding Atatürk and the foundations he established is crucial to comprehend Turkey's foreign policies. Atatürk fought for Turkey's independence and modernization and was a skilled leader who never compromised Turkey's interests. He believed in absolute independence for Turkey in all aspects and prioritized diplomacy or military military action. Turkey has always maintained its independence even during challenging times such as territorial disputes and economic instability. Atatürk's foreign policy, policy ensured conditional uh, independence of the Republic of Turkey. 
By examining these developments, we can gain a better understanding of Atatürk's foreign policy and its impacts on Turkey's history. Uh, Atatürk's foreign policy was based on several case principles, including neutrality, non-alignment, and peaceful coexistence. He believed that Turkey should maintain good relations with all nations and avoid taking sides in conflicts between major powers. At the same time, he recognized the importance of alliances and partnerships in promoting Turkey's security and economic development and pioneered the establishment of alliances in this direction. After Turkey achieved its national sovereignty, he displayed a clear and unequivocal attitude in foreign policy. We can see this approach in the following words of At Atatürk. All foreign policy, which is honest and open, is especially based on idea of peace to resolve any of our international problems by means of peace. And we can see this approach in his other uh, words that uh, seeking is the way we think and fits our understanding. We attach great importance to security principles and its tools in order not to be faced with a proposed order. The Turkish Republic will do its best to preserve the international atmosphere of peace. Atatürk, a leader who fought in World War, World War I and the Turkish War of Independence, played an in, important role in establishing relationships with neighboring countries and Western states, states during the interwar period. His effective health policies helped to invest in the future of Turkey. Atatürk anticipated possible events and took initiatives to ensure the country's security. Atatürk established diplomatic missions around the world, participated in international conferences and signed trade agreements to promote Turkey's interests. Then uh, he made the Turkey the member of League of Nations. It's obvious that all these this actions impact on today's Turkish diplomacy. Atatürk's legacy in Turkish foreign affairs is still evident today. His emphasis on neutrality and non-alignment continues to influence Turkey's foreign policy, uh, particularly in its relations with global powers. Additionally, Atatürk's legacy is evident in Turkey's efforts to maintain good relations with its uh, neighboring countries and promote regional stability. Turkey's foreign policy that was shaped by him was not without, without its challenges. Turkey faced many obstacles in its efforts to establish friendly nations uh, with other nations. For example, Turkey's relations with neighboring Greece were strained due to territorial disputes, uh, while its relations with the Soviet Union were complicated by ideological differences. As a country with uh, rich as a country with rich history and strategic location, Turkey has been a significant player in foreign affairs for decades. Despite facing numerous challenges and controversies, Turkey has, has also had several successes in its foreign policy efforts. One of these successes is its complete and still running membership projects, uh, such as European Union Customs Union and Turkey's uh, current uh, European Union membership process. Turkey has successfully increased economic partnership with its bordering countries by signing trade agreements, such as a free, a free trade agreement with Iraq, Iraq and preferential trade agreements with Iran in uh, 2014 and Azerbaijan in 2020. These agreements have boosted Turkey's economy and importance in the region. Uh, Turkey has also played a significant role in the peace process between Afghanistan and Taliban by hosting TAS in April 2021. Additionally, Turkey has been hosting Syrian immigrants who were displaced from their homes due to deplorable living conditions since 2011. Furthermore, Turkey aims to maintain peace in the region and ensure a secure living environment, environment for its people while protecting its borders as a member of NATO. 
The country has faced with obstacles in peace talks, but its efforts to facilitate dialogue have been commanded by international actors. Moreover, Turkey has successfully uh, expanded its foreign relations beyond its traditional Western allies and forging closer ties with uh, Russia and China through uh, trade agreements and defense agreements. As a result, Atatürk's influence in Turkish foreign policy was a reflection of his pragmatic approach to governance and his important uh, his commitment to protect Turkey's national interests. The emphasis on neutrality and non-alignment helped establish Turkey as a respected regional power and laid the groundwork as a mediator in international conflicts. His forward-thinking policies still support this respected and strong position of modern Turkey in the international arena. His legacy as a visionary leader who transformed Turkey into a modern secular state remains undisputed. Thanks to Atatürk's reforms and correct foreign policies he implemented at the time, Turkey has now become an independent, free and democratic republic that can make its own decisions and effective power around the world. The effects of his principles and for, uh, foresight ensure Turkey's indivisible integrity and independence and the prestige. Thanks for listening me to all listeners. That's all. Absolutely. I think, uh, and I am sure many of you will uh, agree with me, no one can fully understand and evaluate the current uh, foreign policies of modern Turkey without having a full comprehension of Atatürk's struggle for modernization and westernization first. So thank you very much, Dem, uh, for this informative speech. Uh, it was nice to learn from you. Uh, and now, please welcome our second speaker, Asude Bilge Çınarer, from Antalya Kumluca Social Sciences High School to make her speech, uh, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk in the eyes of the Anzacs. Asude, we're with you. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks a lot. First of all, Can you hear me well? Okay. So first of all, I like I like to say hello to all the viewers. Uh, my name is Asla Gizhenara, and I'm representing Kumda Social, Social Sciences High School. And today, the topic that I will be talking about is Mustafa Kemal Atatürk in the eyes of the Anzacs. The past century has witnessed two great world wars that have caused great suffering. Our nation entered the First World War as the Ottoman Empire and made history at the Çanakkale Front and showed the whole world an example of an unprecedented patriotism. Although the people against us in Çanakkale may seem like the British and the French, they actually provoked their colonial states against us and brought the nation we call Anzac from countries such as New Zealand and Australia against us. The name Anzac meaning the Australian and New Zealand courts is derived from the word Anzac, used for Australian and New Zealanders who fought in the First World War at the Dardanelles and against the Turks. It is the English abbreviation for the Australian and New Zealand courts. Today, there is a great monument in the name of the Turk in Canberra, the capital of the Australian continent. Turkish delegations visiting Australia do not pass without visiting this monument, because the Turks living in Australia lay a wreath on November the 10th every year and also gather in front of this monument and commemorate Atatürk with respect. Well, have you ever thought about why this monument stands in Australia, the land of a nation we call Anzac? The answer is that again, the answer is again hidden in the First World War. At the Çanakkale Front, where we took part in the First World War, Mustafa Gama changed the course of the war with his armies at 1st Anafartala, 2nd Anafartala, and Jönfayda, and determined the fate of the Turkish nation. In 1921, when the War of Independence broke out in our country, the first volume of the official history book on the Dadanas War was published in Australia, and Mustafa Kemal was extensively covered in this book. While these are written and explained in this book, in which Mustafa Kemal explains that he blocked the way of Anzacs 
in the first hours of the landing in Chanakale and constituted the basic build building block of a great defeat that would lead to the change of government in England, Mustafa Kemal Pasha was fighting with the Greeks in Sakarya. As a result of these wars, which resulted in the resignation of the Lord George government in England, all world history began to use a very respectful language for Mustafa Kemal Pasha and continued to write various works in his name. Likewise, the beautiful words of Mustafa Kemal about the Anzacs in the 1930s conquered the hearts of the people of Australia and New Zealand. These words entered books, were engraved on marble and stones in various parts of the Australian continent, and even adorned the underside of the Atlantic Monument in cap capital Canberra, which we have just mentioned. On the occasion of the 100th anniversary of Atatürk's birth, 1981, was declared the year of Atatürk by UNESCO and various events were held in lands where Mustafa Kemal was influential all over the world. In those years in Australia, it was decided to erect this monument in order to immortalize the memory of Mustafa Kemal. Likewise, there is a monument in Chanakala Maturdom in memory of the Austrians who died in Chanakala. Additionally, Atatürk's words about the Anzacs were added to the fountain in Chanakale, which we refer to as the Gallipoli Honor Fountain. In almost every volume of works on the Dardanus Wars published in the continent of Australia, a large part is prepared for Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, and these wars have a very important place in the history of Australia. Many publications have been made on this subject in English and French. Just after the First World War in 1921, the Australian official history was prepared on the Dardanelles Wars. In this great two-volume work written by Charles Edward Bond, one of the Australia's greatest, greatest historians, one, and completed between 1921 and 1924, Atatürk's unique place in the Dardanelles Wars was objectively emphasized. Seventy years after the Dardanelles Wars, the idea of commemoration with the ceremony emerged in, in 1985, and as the anniversary approached, a movement began among the Anzacs in Australia. They wanted, they wanted the coastline they landed on the Gallipoli Peninsula to be officially named Anzac Club in 1915. There were many Australians who wished to see this while still alive. On the other hand, of course, Turkish veterans could be named after somewhere in Australia. Thus, the, name, the memory of the Gallipoli Wars and the Anzacs would be commemorated in the future. The Anzacs started some kind of campaign for this. In Sydney, the Anzacs formed a club called the Gallipoli Legion. The members of this club were former soldiers who actually fought, who had actually fought in Chanakale in 1915, and they were all over 90 years old now. Declining in numbers as years passed, this team remained in Sydney era in early 1984 with 69 survivors. These Legion members had taken steps to fulfill their respective wishes and decided to apply to the Australian government. It would be extraordinary to create a permanent monument to keep the memory of those who died in Chanakale alive forever. We have had relations with Turks in Australia since 1965. There is no enmity between us. We are proud of our Anzac tradition. They are proud of theirs. There are very few of us now, but the memory of what we have done is worth keeping alive. If the Australian government decides to make a gesture, I'm sure the Turkish government won't let it go unanswered. It would be nice to see this happen on its 17th anniversary, which will be commemorated next year. The Australian press also supported this event. In response to this event, which was given on front page in the statements in the Times newspaper of the period, the government officially proposed Turkey to name the most special places in the capital of Australia, Canberra, after Atatürk. Drawing attention to an important point in these meetings, the Turkish embassy stated that the place to be named Atatürk in Canberra should be place of a worthy man, of a great man, and wrote that it would be appropriate to adopt the name Anzaco. That great place, which is known as Ainzia Hill, which dominates the capital Canberra and can be seen from all sides, started to be called Atatürk Hill after this event. Thus, the name of the most special hill of the capital of Australia was officially changed to Atatürk Hill. The commander of the Anzac army, General William Birdwood said, the Turkish soldier gives his life for his country without hesitation. He's a tough and a brave soldier, but when a ceasefire is called, he is kind and humane, bandaging his enemy's wound and carrying him on his back for his life. This valuable gesture, which reminds us that such a soldier has never been seen before in this world, also reveals how valuable a leader Mustafa Kemal Pasha was in the eyes of the Anzacs.
After the war, General Burt met with Mustafa Kemal Atatürk and in the speech they gave about victory, the great leader said, I didn't do anything. First tightness, then first stop your enemy, army. His modesty in saying these and his words about the Anzac soldiers who lost their lives in the war should never be forgotten. Those heroes that shed their blood and lost their lives. You are now lying on the soil of a friendly country. Therefore, rest in peace. There is no difference between the Janis and the Mehmeds to us where they lie side by side in, our in this country of ours. You, the mothers, who sent their sons from faraway countries, wipe away your tears. Your sons are now lying in our bosom and are in peace. After having lost their lives on this land, they have become our sons as well. Thanks for listening to me. Uh, thank you very much, Asadir. Uh, what I would like to tell about your speech is uh, anyone can depict something. Uh, we, When we hear the word depict, depiction, we always think about painting. Uh, but depicting something verbally is a very difficult job. You could depict those difficult days to us and in, in English. So I really would like to congratulate you again on behalf of all our uh, viewers. Uh, it was really nice to uh, hear you out, learn things from you. Now, uh, I would like to invite our next speaker. Uh, our next speaker today with us is Osman Aksu, joining from Aydin FLR Social Sciences High School. Uh, and he'll be telling us about Atatürk uh, through the eyes of the West this time. Uh, Osman, the floor is yours. The screen is yours. Thank you. Well, um, firstly, hi everyone. I'm Osman Aksu, um, studying Island Social Science School, and I'm 10th grade. And today I'm gonna talking about Mustafa Kemal Atatürk for the eyes of the West. And of course, it's a historical topic, and it's necessary to consider with the conditions of the time if, if we are want to understand. And I'm explaining two conditions of the time. The world had changed a lot since the long glorious era of Turkish rule and technology had advanced. Machinery had replaced the manpower and the Ottoman economy was in a great economic depression. And multinational structure of Ottoman empire is not suitable for the new world by dominate by concept of nationalism. In this dark time, a man hate has come. Of course, I'm talking Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. Uh, he is founder of secular, modern, and new Turkish Republic. It, Atatürk means father of Turks. He is an intellectual and at the same time versatile person. He is a statesman, leader, military general, and a writer. Many such cliches can be said about him, but the most important thing is what is Atatürk's philosophy and mentality? I guess the answer to this question is definition of Atatürk in Dictionary of UNESCO. It says, an outstanding person who devoted himself for the development of international understanding cooperation and the peace a revolutionist who realized extraordinary reforms, the first leader who fought against imperialism and colonialism, a unique statesman respectful to human rights, pioneer of worldwide peace who never discriminated people according to their color, religion, or race throughout his life, founder of Turkish Republic. It means he's constructive, not destructive like other soldiers and statesmen, and he is symbol of peace. And let's see what the media organs, uh, historians, and statesmen have to say about him. First, in New York Times, it says, one of the most talented leaders of post-war era. Uh, actually, you can't find a few leaders who know their country uh, history and geography so well. And although the Ottoman Empire uh, was in the progress of collapse, 
there will always be talented peoples. Uh, for example, literary figures such as Tefik Fikret, Ziya Gökal, soldiers such as Fevzi Çakmak ve Alforbay, sciences such as Fuat Köprülü, Hüseyin Tefik Paşa, they are intellectuals and idealists of their time. And Mustafa Kemal is one of them and influenced by them. Um, next, Professor Halbert Melzing, historian, it says, to who want to reestablish peace and well-being in suffering world, and ensure spiritual development of humanity, not only material, should take the example and strength of Atatürk's faithful and breathing spirit. And it means Atatürk's revolutionary spirit became a fire of all anti-imperialist struggles from east of the west, and such as Amanullah Khan in Afghanistan, Gandhi in India, and many more. And the all leading revolutionary spirit of world were sparked by its fire. All these examples inspired by him. And also Atatürk uh, made many reforms. For example, abolition of Sultanate, Republic, abolition of Caliphate, adoption of civil code, abolition of sex, acceptance of secularism, recognition of woman, woman rights, and the reforms he made were much more than meets the eye because neither Turkish society at that time nor the world was not very suitable for such innovative ideas. And so it was not easy to realize them. You cannot suddenly impose a regime like the Republic on a society uh, has been ruled by Sultanate and Caliphate for about seven centuries. And because until that time, the state was a father figure uh, where is the new regime? It took the rule of Sevent. And in addition, according to Atatürk, the Caliphate and Lodges had destroyed the Seljuk and Ottoman empires, had destroyed, and pr th that preceded him. And religion was abused, and the goodwill of people was abused. For this reason, new regime based on secularism. And next up, uh, it's a not mention of Western source, but we will touch on an important point, I think. Mustafa Kemal uh, commanded the 19 Turkish infantry regime in the battles in Araburnu on the Gilibolu front of the First World War and resist the Anzac raid. Anzacs were attacked by his achievements here and erected a monument to their country as a symbol of their respect for Atatürk. Also, foreign women followed the rights he gave to Turkish woman with envy. In short, imagine, imagine such a leader that even his enemies admired him. Next in line, Albert Lebrun is president of French. It says his work, which he carried out with intelligent and peaceful methods, will leave its trees in the history of people. It means the greatest legacy Atatürk left us is the ability to think fluently and principles of peace. In his own words, if one day my words go against science, choose science, peace at home, peace in the world. This is Atatürk's working method. I mean, pragmatism and experimentalism. It means when you see something wrong in problem solving, not to insist on it and to look for another way and to be open the whole world and ideas while doing this. This is the most important thing Atatürk taught us. And also speech written by Atatürk and describing the Turkish national struggle is the most important indicator of this, I think. Speech is a recorded project that was actually being made. Like some sciences or philosophers, he did not write the book first and then make up something suitable for it. Atatürk did it first and recorded it. Undoubtedly, Atatürk was a person who had many qualities for beyond his time and proved this to the whole world with the, his actions, there are really always lessons we can draw from his teaching. Let's end his own words to talk about his unique person. To see me does not necessarily mean to see my face. To understand my thoughts is to have seen me, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. That's all. Thank you for listening to me. Osman
thanks a lot. Uh, I could, uh, and everybody, I am sure everybody could uh, feel the pride uh, in your voice while you were talking about his ideas and especially the definition of Atatürk in, in UNESCO. Uh, but I would like to add something. If he were alive, he would be so proud of you guys. So it's really unbelievable uh, to be only hosting this session. I am sure your viewers who can understand you, who can uh, uh, understand what you mean, uh, feel emotional now. So thank you very much again uh, on behalf of our viewers, of course. Uh, I'll move on to our next uh, speaker now. Uh, our fourth speaker, uh, of this session is Ekin Aydin from Antalya Gülveren Anatolian High School. She is sure to impress all of you, both with her nice voice as a theatre player herself and her speech as well. Uh, her speech is on the image of Mustafa Kemal Atatürk in Western countries and his policies. So Ekin, welcome on board. We're with Hello. you. So um, Mustafa Kemal was undoubtedly one of the most revolutionary leaders of his generation and his ideas, his political strategies, these reforms that he brought to his country proved way too many times that he was a leader who was way ahead of his time. And he's often mentioned by historians as a leader who's one of a kind. And um, almost every Turkish person would agree on this fact. Today in this presentation, I will firstly dig into his conspicuous qualities that drew the attention of Western countries and his main questions. What brought him to the non-negotiable place that he stands in today, historically? And what drew the attention of so many Western leaders who admired him so much? So let's take a look at his journey from the very beginning and um, his role in international relationships uh, based on the fact that he followed a path that is um, both he's a statesman, leader, soldier, and a writer. So uh, I think everybody knows that he was born in Salonika and he was the founder and the first president in Turkish Republic. Um, he was a kid who had a very strong passion for military. And then he later contributed to that passion by joining military high school, where his uh, interest for literature and writing grew. Uh, as his interest for art grew, he gained some certain ideology, which later contributed to his um, principles, which were rep republicanism, populism, secularism, reformism, nationalism, and statism. So let's take a look at his conspicuous qualities that drew the attention of all the other people around the world, especially the West. So ever since the very beginning of Turkish Republic's journey, he was determined to westernize the country without losing any of the qualities that met, made Turkey, Turkey. The culture, the freedom, he always refused to be under the mandate of any great state, but he wanted to remain westernized. And he did that by never underestimating the power of newspapers and the press. And he wanted to remain friendly with politicians, journalists, diplomats, um, mission representatives from another country. So he always wanted to remain friendly as a country that is newly born and um, so one of the most outstanding leaders who appreciated him was Winston Churchill, who once quoted um, the tears that women and men of all classes shed upon his rear were a fitting tribute to the champion and the father of modern Turkey, which showed his um, admi admiration, for, admiration for him. And later uh, in his funeral, his grandson pointed out the fact that he always was inspired by Atatürk himself. And he actually inspired him to uh, become a politician. So, but he's not the only British authorized person who admired Atatürk so much. Another one who was a well-known British general, Charles Townshend said, conducted interviews with 15 kings and presidents. I cannot recall one single incident. I was as excited and impressed as when I interviewed him, which showed him what kind of image Atatürk drew in other people's eyes, especially in the West. Um, and it told the British press a lot about his personality in general. 
Um, and the next notable recognition for him in the press was his appearance on the Times Magazine on uh, 24th March, 1923, which proved how many people admire him from America. And in the interview uh, that was published in the Times Magazine, which started with the direct question, uh, what is a Turk the master of himself? And the contributor answer in hell, which was caused by the weak image of Ottoman Empire back day, back in the day. And um, he responds to this downgrading expression by saying in Turkey, which was um, meaningful at the time. And it meant that the weak image was drowned back in the day and the strong image was resurrected in newly born Turkey. And later Times Magazine also noted he stands today as the emancipator of Turkish Republic and he has lifted people out of the slow of uh, alien authority and gave them to an understanding of their freedom. So, um, but as admirers, admired as he was, uh, there was also long time controversy surround, surrounding the press um, about him, his ideologies, beneficial strategies, cultures, everything. For example, Lord Kinross portrayed him as a Macedonia leader because he was born in Salonika, while Glasnik wrote about him and he emphasized anti-imperialism. And unlike them, um, the American journalist Gladys Baker was interviewing him, interviewing him and he, she said, um, are you directly, are you a dictator? Which showed that uh, not every writer back in the day in the West was had the same opinion about him in general. Uh, but um, uh, the strategy of building friendly relationships with every country was one of his main policies coming from the principle of peace at home, peace in the world, especially due to the power dynamics of the world's politics changing. Uh, some certain countries have some certain advantages and some did not. So it made it necessary for a newly born republic to remain friendly with uh, other states to remain powerful. So what he wanted to achieve for his nation was far from aggrandizement or territorial expansion. With the policies he followed, he openly rejected being under the mandate of any great state. And he was aware of the impact of keeping personal relationships with the other world. That's why uh, whenever a mission representative would show up, he would learn uh, about their culture, about their personal relations, about um, their connections with people. And then when they showed up as a leader, he would sincerely tell them about the information that he has about them. And that would really impress them back in the day. And whenever they had the chance to interact with the press about him, they would tell him, tell them how much of an image he had in their eyes. And they, that would affect Turkish Republic and the reputation of Turkish Republic very well. Um, and he never underestimated the power of local and international newspapers for the country's political success. Uh, regardless of any condition, he was um, always releasing newspapers for um, connecting with his people and the people to know what opinion he has in his mind. One of the most radical newspapers of the national struggle was a daily newspaper called Anadolu Yenigun during the Battle of Sakarya. The daily newspaper New Day was printed in September by Yunus Nadi in Istanbul. The newspaper played a significantly important role in spreading information correctly in the conflicted situation uh, during the national struggle, which proves the prioritization given to communication and image by the leader at that time. Um, but uh, interesting thing about him is that he never um, underestimated it, but he also used it as a source to slow down the complicated situations when there was one. For example, uh, during the Great Offensive, the very beginning of Great Offensive, uh, there was this really complicated complicated situation. And he gave the headline to a newspaper and said that he was going to have a tea party in his mansion. But later he went and started the Great Offensive with his friends instead of having a tea party while everybody thought he was having a tea party and nothing was going on. But um, he used newspapers and communication as a source to um, slow down the complicated situations in Turkish Republic. So one of the most conspicuous qualities he had was um, in his student years, even he was interested in 
writers and artists from the West. That's why his ideology is very similar to the Western artists in general. Um, even during his years as a student, he was inspired by Jean-Jacques Rousseau, who remains one of the most important theorists of positive liberty and an influential 18th century Republican thinker. Uh, the one the words of Atatürk, uh, as we all know, authority without any condition and reservation belongs to the nation, is thought to be highly inspired by uh, Jean-Jacques Rousseau himself, uh, knowing the fact that he read the 1923 made Turkish translation of Rousseau's book, Contrast Social. And um, when it came to topics like science and human mind, he took notes from Voltaire. He read about different topics like education, sociology, uh, literature, culture, history. After spending a significant amount of time reading, he ended up writing his own books as well. Um, he had a unique sense of understanding of westernization. Though his political principles were affected by the West, he always gave big importance to protecting the cultural heritage of the country and always rejected being an under the menet of any country under any circumstances. With his knowledge, sense of balance, leadership skills, and um, his love for his people, he drew the attention of almost every foreign country. The name of his still remains one of the most radical revolutionist and well-respected leaders in the world and will still always remain that way. So thank you so much. That was about all. Thanks an awful lot, Ekin. Uh, I could envisage as you made your speech, the pride in other countries' leaders' faces as well, having met such a knowledgeable leader as Atatürk who achieved this only by reading and searching in an era uh, without the media. Uh, so I, I, I, as I told you earlier in our studies, I, I am really affected by that bit a lot. And uh, I also would like to thank you for that wonderful, confident, fluent American accent. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, now, uh, without further ado, I'll move on to our fifth speaker, Atuja Begum Doan. Uh, and she will now go on informing us about this great impression Atatürk made in the eyes of the West. Uh, Begum is from Antalya Türkler Borsa Istanbul Social Sciences High School. Uh, we welcome her to make her speech on Mustafa Kemal through the eyes of the West now. Begum, we're waiting for you. Hi, I'm Begum. I study in Türkler Borsa Istanbul Social Sciences High School. I'm in prep class. And now I would like to share my screen. I can't share my screen. Can you see it? It's all right now, Begum. My topic is Mustafa Kemal Atatürk through the eyes of the West. After the Dardanelles war, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk's leader image was on the rise in the Western public opinion, which also indirectly changed the image of the Turkish nation in the international arena. In the following years, the rapid breakthroughs which the Republic of Turkey made in a short time inevitably led political leaders, diplomats, and foreign journalists to take the lead as the main agents molding the image of Atatürk throughout the world and presenting Turkey as the new power center of the Middle East and the Balkans. However, the Second World War was a breaking point in understanding the absolute value of Atatürk. Biographical studies, memoirs, newspaper reports, and articles began to appreciate his belief in independence and peaceful foreign policy and a successful struggle against imperialism. Atatürk is still commemorated not only as a literal leader changing the fate of the Turkish nation, but also as a political figure who made his mark in world history. 
Today, there are many signs in different countries, such as avenues, streets, parks, gardens, and facilities named after Atatürk, proving that he is internationally accepted as a universal personality, who seems to have somehow touched the lives of various peoples from different geographies and different cultures with his ideas. Many local and foreign writers have written books about Atatürk in which they tribute admiration for him and his heroic deeds. Now I will talk about Atatürk in written sources. A considerable amount of scholars published books about Atatürk's achievements and countless newspapers and magazines applauding his revolutionary side have carried Atatürk to their headlines. In addition to numerous Turkish writers, many foreign authors such as Andrew Mango, Klaus Kreiser, and Paul Jensen declared their admiration for Atatürk in their biographical works. Mango, for instance, had to do work for five years for his work named Atatürk, the biography of the founder of modern Turkey in which he describes Atatürk as a radical modernist, culture-bound Westerner, optimist and humanist leader. Besides, the British historian Arnold Joseph claims in his The Western Question in Greece and Turkey a study in the context of civilizations that Mustafa Kemal was not an adventurous soldier who conquered Anatolia with terror or hypocrisy, but a true Turkish nationalist who tried to reorganize Turkey within the framework of Western and progressive ideals. Likewise, Time, the world's most widely read news and politics magazines, features Atatürk on the cover of magazine twice. Firstly, Atatürk was on the magazine in 1923, a few months before the proclamation of the Republic. In its edition dated in 1917, 27, Time emphasized Atatürk's leadership and the rapid breakthroughs which the Republic of Turkey made in a short time. The British newspaper Sunday Times also described Mustafa Kemal's libertarian reforms, progressive stance on women's rights, and administrative skills. On the other hand, in 1937, Belgian newspaper Independence Belge declared its admiration to Turkey by claiming that today, the biggest states are courting Turkey, which was once moribundi. Now we will look at places named after Atatürk in various countries. Today, there are also other signs such as avenues, streets, parks, gardens, and facilities named after Atatürk, which reveal that he had achieved to reach various peoples from different geographies and different cultures with his ideas. For instance, there is a big street named Mustafa Kemal Atatürk in honor to the great statesman and Turkish national hero in Santo Domingo, the capital city of the Dominican Republic. Besides, one of the largest parks in Patterson, New Jersey, where the most Turkish population in America lives, is named Atatürk Park, while in the capital of Peru, Lima, a park is named after one of Atatürk's famous sayings, peace at home, peace in the world. Atatürk statues and monuments abroad. In addition to the streets, squares, and parks named after Atatürk, it's also possible to come across his monuments and statues in many parts of the world. From Romania, Hungary, Kazakhstan, New Zealand, to Venezuela, Australia, Mexico, and Israel. One of the outstriking monuments takes place in Amsterdam, Netherlands, on which is written, Peace at home, peace in the world in Dutch and Turkish. Atatürk's homeland was here. Turks lived in his homeland. They gave unity, togetherness, and happiness. This monument was erected to remember them. Additionally, the following is written on the monument, which glorifies the Turkish people. Another landmark is the statue of Atatürk in Kushimoto, Japan, a 7.5-meter bronze statue which was erected in 2010. 
on the introductory board in front of it, there is the following inscription from the Kushimoto municipality and its Japanese translation, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, who led his people to save his homeland, which was divided and occupied at the end of the First World War, is the great hero of the Turkish nation, who gave his nation a great victory in this war. Now we will continue with Atatürk on the world agenda after his death. The impact Atatürk left on both the West and the world public opinion is not limited to his lifetime. It can be thought that Atatürk, who has made a name for himself in many parts of the world today, went on trips abroad constantly when he was alive. However, Atatürk did not step outside his country since his visit to the German military headquarters in 1917. In return, many statesmen from various parts of the world made diplomatic visits to him. Among these statesmen are the King of Iraq, the Shah of Iran, the English King, the Greek King and Queen. Even after his death, many foreign politicians, diplomats and journalists personally attended his funeral or sent their messages. Almost all European states sent funeral committees and army troops to pay their last respect to the great statesman and military commander. International organizations, such as the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization and many important foreign political figures have spoken in praise of him as a unique statesman. UNESCO traditionally organizing programs to commemorate historical personalities on their birth or death senatures also honored Atatürk by praising him as one of the symbols of humanity. Atatürk is a heroic leader who succeeded in establishing a throne in the hearts of the Turkish nation by saving his homeland that was divided and occupied by foreign enemies at the end of the First World War. Atatürk's progressive attitude, his successful struggle against imperialism, his libertarian revolutions, his stance on women's rights, and his peace at home, peace in the world philosophy rendered him not only a national hero, but also a legendary universal figure who will be remembered forever. Thank you for listening to me. Begum, uh, your speech is one of the most informative speeches, really, I have uh, listened to about Tatatuk. I didn't know many of those uh, information, like uh, the monument in Japan, uh, as an example. I had no idea. Uh, so thank you for teaching me. Uh, I really loved and enjoyed learning from you. Now, uh, let's move on to our uh, last speaker, last but not least. Uh, with us today is Seher Muran from uh, one of our hosting schools uh, who helped us a lot, Antalya Neriman Erol Yilmaz Social Sciences High School. And we are excited to hear our speech from Broken Hill Conspiracy, the Dardanelles War, to the Turkish and Zerk friendship. Welcome on board, sir. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, today, I will talk about the Turkish Anzac friendship during the Dardanelles War. So, war is an armed action in which states break off their um, political relations against each other with their armies due to economic and political disagreements. And in other words, war is the activation of the power where diplomacy is blocked. When the World War I and World War II are examined in terms of their power of influence, it is seen that they contain much greater meanings, meanings than a war. The World War I, which is called the mother of the wars, um, caused the loss of 10 million of people and the injury of 21 million of people. The war between the Antan states, um, the war between Antan group led by Great Britain, so-called the empire which never says the sun, and the alliance group led by Germany, which just achieved its political unity, lasted for four years. It left the political, social, military, economic, and cultural traces on the world before, during, and after the war. 
and this war caused an unsafe and dangerous area. The Ottoman state appeared to us as a state that changed the course of history. Although the Ottoman Empire lost the war at the end, the spirit of struggle prepared the ground for more blossoming um, of a sprout like a Republic of Turkey and a new Turkish state. So um, esteemed participants, what is the power that makes us say, stop passenger, Çanakkale is impassable. If I ask, how could be friendship formed into a place that every square meter of the homeland is watered by the blood of thousands of soldiers and people? It must be ironic. The war and peace are so close and far from each other at the same time, because the fronts were so close, the soldiers mentioned that they could um, literally touch each other in the fronts, but uh, diplomatically, they were so far because of the Broken Hill conspiracy. So, Çanakkale was Seyit Onbaşı. Çanakkale was Nusret Mindlayer. Çanakkale was Galatasaray, Konya, and Izmir high schools that did not have a single graduate in 1915. And mostly, uh, Çanakkale was Mustafa Kemal Atatürk who pulled us out of a great sorrow. Gallipoli was the front that where we encountered the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps, which we will refer to as ANZACs. Australia was included in this war with the Broken Hill attack in 1915. Before the World War I, the people, people of Australia and New Zealand know very little about the Turks. And as far as they learned from the Western books, they were um, the Turks were a nomadic nation that had been fighting with the Christians for centuries. They were good fighters according to the Anzacs, but um, they made their final mistake by standing on the German sides instead of the Great Britain. So on their way to Gallipoli, they believed that they were going to fight with the unworthy Turks. And in addition, news from Athens in some local newspapers included news that Turks killed or tortured prisoners of war without mercy. Some even believed that um, they would be eaten alive if they captured by the Turks during the war, and some of them carried poison with them. Thousands of Thousands of Anzacs were unable to return their homeland, but Dardanelles was the foundational mortar in the building of a new Australian nation. In addition, by laying foundations of Turkish Anzac friendship, the commemoration ceremony is called Anzac Day, held on Gallipoli Peninsula every year on the 25th April, have revealed a friendship that is rare in the history between the sides of Turkey, Australians, and New Zealand. So, um, we want to continue with the uh, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk's words for the Anzacs mothers. Heroes who shed their blood on the lands of this country. You are from a friendly land here. Sleep in peace and tranquility. You are side by side with Mehmetcik. Mothers who sent their children to the war from faraway lands. Suit your tears. Your children are in our bosom. They are in peace and will sleep peacefully. After they gave their lives, on this land, they become our children now. During the war, contrary to official propaganda, the Turk was no longer seen as Turk not worth talking to. They were as human and as sensitive as any Anzacs. They were bleeding, trembling with fear, dying by screaming too, as any Anzacs. They were, there were grieving parents and widows behind them too. For example, um, a soldier's letter titled Concentrate and Respectful Turk published in Argus newspaper on the 10th August 1915, Australian sergeant H.D. Collier told his friend from the hospital in Malta, the Turks are actually good-hearted people, and here's an incident I remember providing this. Once a Turkish soldier bandaged one of our wounded soldiers and told him to leave immediately. Otherwise, if a German officer came, he would shut them both because the Germans, they were actually the real responsibles of this disaster, and in, they were intimating the Turks, and Turks cannot show us the natural aspect of their character. Johnny Turk had respectful meanings such as our friend of enemy. Bahavefa Karatay, who was appointed as Turkey's first ambassador to Australia in 1965, listened to the following interesting memory from an Anzac he met years later. We were going to leave Gallipoli in the morning. We are commanded to leave nothing behind. We had to destroy all the food stocks, but me and my second sergeant made a decision. We would leave everything to the Johnny Turks. That's what we did. We wrote a big warning note and we said, Johnny Turk, these are not poisonous. Enjoy it. 
1991, a study was conducted by uh, Mete Tonçoku on the last living Anzacs. The aim was to determine the Turkish image in the eyes of the last living Anzacs and their judgments about the Turks. This interview uh, held face to face, and these are the questions uh, that is being asking. The first question, exactly 76 years ago, when you set out to participate in the First World War, what did you know and what did you think about Turkey and Turks in general? Two, when you returned to your country after the war ended, what were your feelings and thoughts towards the Turks after all that ha happened? Three, years later, when you look back, what did you think and what did you feel about the Gallipoli campaign and the days you spent there and all that happened? Four, have you ever had the opportunity to go to Turkey or Gallipoli after the war? If so, how did you feel and what kind of impressions did you return? So uh, we will hear the answer of the racial John James Spear. He is 97 years old, born in 1894. He's from New Zealand and he arrived at Gallipoli at the day of landing. He remained there until the 21st June, 1915. He was sent back when he was injured. He participated in the battles of Landing, Sparrow Hill, Bombridge, and Kirte. And um, these are the, his answers. The first answer is, there was no information about the Turks and Turkey. After four months of training in Egypt, we didn't know where, this, where the first skirmish would be. The second, as long as we fought with the Turks, I could not get a person opinion, personal opinion about them. We couldn't even see them. Um, we were trying to do only one thing, and it was surviving. Three, I think they are honest, more honest fighters than the Germans. I also think that they were brought into this war by the Germans, even though they didn't want to. These are my thoughts once. Now it's all over. And the last answer is, the operation was well thought out in the plan and concept, but the British could not execute and impl implement it well. The events of those days are still very vivid in my memories. It was worth the effort. Fortunately, I survived the war. However, hundreds of thousands of Turks and our forces died. There was no hatred towards the Turks. Our only hope and wish was that the one of the bullets, bullets didn't find us. Last year, I could have gone there because of the 75th anniversary ceremonies, but I declined. I thought it was very different from the bare hills we had seen. I've heard that it is. I would just like to meet one of the Turkish soldiers. Turks were doing the same thing, defending their country. One of the interesting results of the war was the feeling of appreciation and respect for the enemy Turk at the end of the war. In the beginning, they believed uh, what they've been told about the Turks. Over time, these claims have been proven to be unfounded. Um, before the war, there were no bad memories between the Australians and the Tur Turkish side. They had uh, the opportunity to make their own observations about the Turks. And um, they were just like themselves. Turkish were just like the Anzacs. They uh, suffered them like themselves. They died like themselves. They also had the loved ones and a family behind. And also they were fighting uh, for defending their country. The Turks were fighting for us. They were trying to defend our country. As the time passed, they even... The Anzacs even thought that the Turks were right in their struggle. And the Anzac soldiers found themselves in the middle of a political gamble in this war, which they entered for the sake of adventures because of the um, Anton states made them. Moreover, when they lost in this gamble, it was inevitable that they would lose their trust in the Anton states, which bring them to this war. And in the end of the war, the Black Turks, who were seen as the enemy of the Christianity for centuries, they turned into cute Jaka Turks. The Anzacs, who said that Turks were not only brave soldiers, but noble people, admired and loved Ataturk for many years. In conclusion, we can say that the reason why Anzacs described the Turks as the sons of a benevolent and civilized nation, as well as heroes, is undoubtedly because the Turks traded very well um, to the soldiers they fight in the countries, and they fought humanly, gentlemen, they were real gentlemen in their work, and they um, act without bearing hostility. So that was all. Thank you for listening to me. Sahar, thanks a lot uh, for telling us 
again about how uh, marvelous leader uh, he was. Uh, we really had fun listening to you, your speech. Uh, I would like to uh, thank all of you, uh, all of our speakers. I really felt so emotional. I couldn't uh, keep but listen, and I would really love to listen to you uh, again. Uh, I'm sure your friends, your uh, viewers felt the same. Uh, it, it's uh, it's obvious that uh, you have carried out a wonderful research. Uh, it's not easy to to write uh, an article, and it it surely is not in English. So I am really proud, as you can understand. My voice is starting to go down now. Uh, I really would like to thank you all and uh, your mentor teachers, your advisory teachers. I really would like to thank them all. I hope I see you uh, one day we meet. Uh, now, uh, in a few minutes, uh, I would like to ask if, if anybody has questions. Uh, I'll wait for a bit. You can ask any questions, or I have you. <laughs> I have questions for you. <laughs> yeah, I, I really would like to know. I guess we, we don't have questions. You don't have questions to each other as well. Uh, so I really would like to uh, close it with your own adjectives. How do you feel uh, when you see uh, Atatürk, how uh, wonderful a leader Atatürk was in the eyes of other countries? How does it make you feel? Would you like to tell? You can. Um, from my opinion, he's a really impressive and knowledgeable people um, person for the other countries. And he is impressive, impressing the other presidents every time when they visit the Turkey. And um, that's that's it. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Me? Um, I personally think that he's such a role model, even for me. I, be I began reading the books that he read and following the path that he followed. And he's like that to another country as well. Just because he's Turkish does not mean other people from other countries do not take him as a role model, as I do. Because the, the path he followed did not have nepotism, did not have any other um, family cause success he had his own and that for me is very special so i'm taking him as a role model thank you very much anyone else who would like to add something to their speeches so it's if it's no it's a no uh i would like to end uh with his own sentence uh the the first extract from uh his address to the youth uh as the young I wish you never forget these two sentences. Your first duty is forever to preserve and to defend Turkish independence and the Turkish Republic. This is the very foundation of your existence and your future. This foundation is your most precious treasure. Do not forget this, uh, bear it always in your mind. Uh, and uh, happy centennial to you all. Thank you very much. Honorable teacher and dear students, thank you very much for your participation and hard work. Our session has ended here and have a nice day.